Thank you, David. Thank you, Hugh. And thank you, Tom. Great conversation. Really appreciate that. This next panel coming up. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention to this point about the questions. Uh, and this applies more than just to this panel. We actually capture all of the questions from all of the panels because there are so many wonderful questions that we don't get to, go, uh, to get to during the session. We know people want answers to them. I was looking at the questions on this one. There's some really provocative, great questions for the panel. What we do coming out of the summit is we work with all of the speaker teams to answer all of those questions. And then we post all of that through sharedvalue.org. So while I know it would be better if you heard an answer right now, uh, we do try to uh, use those and, and publish the points of view so that, that you do get an answer to your question. <clears throat> now, uh, without further ado, I'd like the uh, next panel on the SDGs to come join me as I'm, as I'm introducing them. So uh, Lisa Kingo is the executive director of the UN Global Compact. She, uh, which uh, counts 12,000 signatories covering 170 countries. So she undoubtedly spends a lot of time on airplanes. And I am really proud in particular of this panel because uh, it really represents every corner of the globe. And we see that with the SDGs, it's set a model and a framework for global priorities moving forward. And what I think is really interesting that Lisa is going to uh, investigate with this panel is all of the different ways companies are using the SDGs to translate into their own priorities. So we'll also be joined by, uh, from India, Rajiv Dubey, the uh, group president and CEO of the aftermarket sector from Mahindra and Mahindra. Uh, Martha Herrera, from, uh, coming from Semex in Mexico, the Director of Corporate Social Responsibility. Heek Young Joe Min, the Executive Vice President of Creating Shared Value, always a favorite of mine, uh, from the CJ Group in Korea. Klaus Stieg Peterson, the Chief Sustainability Officer from Novozymes from Denmark. And of course, B. Perez, uh, the Chief Sustainability Officer from the Coca-Cola Company in Atlanta, United States. Thank you so much for joining us. Please let us all welcome them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and honor to lead this next session on shared value and the sustainable development goals. I'm very proud to be up here with my panel for a number of reasons. First of all, I can reveal that everyone are participants of the United Nations Global Compact, which is great, so we are in, in good company. Um, I hope you have also noticed that we have very nice diversity, <laughs> both, <laughs> both in terms of gender, nationality, mindset, points of view that I'm sure you will, you will see in, in, in uh, the coming three quarters of an hour. Um, and since we at the UN Global Compact have just taken the panel pledge, it's really important that we have this nice diversity. And I want to say, sometimes people say to me, so we realize that a, an all-male panel is not good these <laughs> days, but what about an all-female panel? <laughs> and I think it goes both ways. The idea with the panel pledge is to have nice diversity, exactly as we have across the board today. So um, before we will have the pleasure of hearing more from each of uh, our panel members, um, I would like to just uh, share a few personal uh, observations with you uh, from um, being at the United Nations at a how should I say, very uh, remarkable and special moment in history when we both had the adaptation from all uh, nations in the world of the uh, 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals in September. And a couple of months later, uh, the agreement of the, um, the, the Paris uh, Climate Agreement 
which was again the first time that the world came together and with one voice uh, really put both sustainability and climate on the agenda. So it has been a fabulous year. And for those of us that have been following the sustainability agenda for many years, I think maybe 10 years ago, we wouldn't have imagined um, to have a common agenda in the way we have today and a sort of North Star that can lead all of us, no matter what roles we have in society, uh, with the new sustainable development goals to the world that we all want. Um, so we have a great opportunity but with any great opportunities also comes the risk of failure. So now is the moment to take action on the sustainable development goals. This is the plan that the world community has agreed upon together. Um, Global Compact was involved in a like two year consultation process. Uh, up to the adaptation of the goals, where more than 1,000 businesses actually provided input and had an opportunity to make an impact on the goals. So I think it's fair to say, as Ben Ki-moon has expressed many times, that these are our goals. The problem is that this is the plan. There is no plan B. So if we in five or 10 years realize that we are not making progress towards the new sustainable development goals, we have a real challenge. And I think a little bit of a problem in explaining to our children and grandchildren why we didn't act on this fabulous opportunity when the entire world was united at a completely new and wonderful set of goals. Um, there's no doubt that at the UN and among many other stakeholders, there are great expectations to business and the role that business can play in making the global goals become reality. And I think business wants to take that responsibility and be part of making the goals come true. And that is what you will hear from this panel in the next half an hour. Um, so, of course, in addressing the sustainable development goals, um, we are very keen to reach out to companies that are not already very advanced and part of this agenda. Because alone in the United Nations Global Compact, we have like more than 13,000 participants across the world. If we compile that with companies that are members of other good initiatives like ours, maybe we will end at a maximum of, I don't know, 25 or whatever, but we are still far from reaching out to all companies, to all large or medium-sized companies across the world that should be part of this agenda. Otherwise, we are probably not going to be successful in meeting the sustainable development goals. So I just want to share with you that based on the best marketing practices, we have uh, created a campaign at the Global Compact uh, that we call Making Global Goals Local Business. It has gone out to all our more than 80 local networks throughout the world. And the idea is to reach out to companies across the world, also companies that are not part of the sustainability agenda today, because we need everybody on board to help us pull through this agenda. I also hope that you will help us nominate SDG pioneers that should be people from large or big companies across the world that are showing how they are already getting good results with 
implementing the sustainable development goals into their business strategies and can illustrate that the new goals provide interesting platforms for business innovation and for new growth. The goals are wonderful. I think you have all seen the 17 icons in different colors, but it all boils down to the people and the companies and the institutions that are driving this. And we would like to tell stories about great individuals that will be driving the implementation of these global goals. So with these words, I think we should hear from the panel that are all great examples of companies that have already started working with the global goals and even uh, works on combining, addressing the goals with the shared value uh, perspectives and thinking that has been discussed for um, a couple of days in, in this meeting. So I think we should simply dive into it and have some great example and practices on, on how this could be done in, in practice. So Pia, um, I would like to start with you. I mean, you represent one of the greatest brands in the world, the Coca-Cola company. Um, and I think many will look to you to get inspiration from how you are addressing uh, the global goals and trying to implement them across your your large company. Yeah. So please share sure, well, that with, with thank us. Thank you. I mean, we were thrilled to be a part of some of the discussions. And even if we can play a small, simple role, that's important. For us, it fits beautifully with our sustainability framework and our business framework around social, economic, and environmental well-being. And if you look at the 17 goals, and I think there's a chart up on the screen right now, we started with process. And we said, well, how do we think about these goals and how are they relevant to our business and do we have initiatives happening throughout? So this is already on there. But if you go to our website, you can see how we took each goal and layered in where we thought we could play a relevant role and where we felt we could deploy our business to help drive you know, an impact. And in some places, it'll be a small impact where we'll touch maybe a couple communities and other places, hopefully a much greater one. To focus on two priorities that we have, water and women. So if you look at the goals around water and then gender equality, we looked at how we've set our business goals there. And we deployed programs a couple years ago in this space around setting a goal to be water neutral. So we, if you look at our business, we have 3,500 brands. We operate in 207 countries. That's a blessing and a curse. That means that we have a large accountability to help ensure that we're driving our business in the most productive and responsible ways. At the same time, how do we ensure that we're leaving a strong legacy in communities and helping them? And so within water, we know that's the lifeblood of the community. It's also the lifeblood of our business. And so when we set the goal to be water neutral by 2020, and then when we started working on the sustainable development goals, we said, well, this is a great place. We have some expertise. We have some relationships, and we've already brought to bear partnerships within local communities around government, civil society, NGOs, and other businesses that we truly believe that we have a shared vision in mind. And we know that the issues are not mutually excuse exclusive. I know that there's 17 individual components here. But if you just flip through some of the other pictures we have, you'll see that I think we can all agree that women are the ones who bear the burden of the issues around water. If you think about water in emerging countries, they're the ones who are having to take the time away from their education, from work, and go and get the water for their families. They're the ones that are really managing the households. And so when we look at the issues and how they come together, we know that it's really important for us to ensure that we also, as we set our goal to empower 5 million women by 2020 economically, that we also link together the work and the community initiatives around water. So as we build in water infrastructure and free up the woman's time from having to run those errands, she now can develop skills, get her education, and hopefully create a thriving economic opportunity for herself. And I think we all know the UN statistics around women. When they earn a dollar, they give 90 cents of that dollar back to their families and their community. So it really changes that cycle of poverty and enables that community. And so we're thrilled to be a part of it. We also know that 
when you have such a large business, you do have to start somewhere. And I know there was a lot of discussion throughout the day around, well, you know, shouldn't we drive scale? Shouldn't we ensure that the opportunities we have are repeatable? Well, the picture you see on the screen right here is we said, well, we wanted to establish this program where we brought water, women, and community economic empowerment together. We call it an eco center. It delivers um, utilities or a community center in a box. Utilities, the woman can sell water or give it away for free. She has access to electricity, access to connectivity, goods and services, and of course we sell Coca-Cola products. Well, we had to choose and focus on one market first to get the business model right before we could scale it. And you can also go on our website. I don't want to take time away from the other panelists, but um, today we have 100 of those, everywhere from Vietnam to different countries across Africa, and we continue to scale. But it took us time to actually look at what were some of the sustainable development goals, what were our goals, how can we build the business model to be relevant in that local community with the local issues, teach and train the individuals who would be operating it. And today, you know, I love to use this as another example of shared value. They're generating enough revenue where it can employ two women, creating you know, different economic opportunity for them, part owners in the business. And it's also allowed them to train other people to drive scale beneath the program. So go online, read about it. I'll stop there because I think we'll probably get into a rich discussion around how do we think about starting small to learn fast and scale. Thank you, Pia, for a great mm -hmm. example. Um, Klaus, I want to ask you next. Uh, you are the long-standing chief sustainability officer of Lobozymes. And I know that you have driven a significant long-term sustainability strategy at Novozymes. So how are you utilizing that the sustainable development goals are now there and up for grabs for a company like Novozymes? Thank you, Lisa, for the introduction and for that great question. Um, just before I, I jump into that, uh, we are not as famous as Coca-Cola. <laughs> Our products are invisible. You are most likely using them every day, but you don't even know it. <laughs> so just 10 seconds on what we do. We are the world's largest industrial biotech company making enzymes and microbes um, that are the workhorses of nature. And uh, they are applied by 30 industries around the world, uh, different industries in leather and textiles, in, in bio uh, agriculture, in food, in many different products uh, where they reduce energy consumption, water consumption, chemical consumption. Uh, improve the working environment or improve the product quality for, for our customers. So, so sustainability has naturally been at the core of our business for decades. Um, and, and we've used a number of different tools to understand the system that we are part of. So we use life cycle assessments, we use stakeholder analysis to understand the system. And uh, we have learned a lot on that journey. Uh, we learned that when we add up, for example, the CO2 emissions from our supply chain, from our own production sites, and compare it to the savings we generate for our, for our customers, we are a factor 100 net positive. So those kind of tools learn, uh, help us learn what, what kind of company are we, what is it that we can do for the world. And increasingly, our role is changing from being a customer-focused business-to-business uh, company to to a, a company that increasingly orchestrate the network of stakeholders around us that together create our business. Um, and so that involves working with customers, of course, but also suppliers, retailers, NGOs, policymakers, and the UN. So coming to the, to the global goals, uh, we were involved in the consultation process that you talked about, Lisa, since the beginning in, in Rio 2012. And in 2014, uh, we needed as a company to develop uh, new long-term targets and a new uh, strategy for the company. And since we've been involved with the SDG work, we knew what was coming. So we used the draft SDGs as a source of inspiration in developing our new company purpose and strategy, which we then launched in uh, January 2015. And, and uh, in January 15, we, we basically declared that the purpose of Novozymes is to, to meet uh, world needs. Uh, we formulated as, uh, based on biology, we will deliver for better lives in a, in a world under growing pressure. So that is the company purpose today. And our strategy we, we call partnering for impact. And that is uh, to invite like-minded partners, business partners of course, but also non-business partners to join us, to work together with us so that we can move the big rocks on the road ahead to a better world together. 
and, and we've defined a number of, of uh, long-term targets, impact targets that we will steer towards. And, uh, and, and I could then with pride declare uh, that Novozymes no longer has a sustainability strategy because this is our company purpose. And that is, of course, a little scary as a sustainability leader, <laughs> but uh, it, so far, so good. <laughs> um, and so partnering for impact is our strategy, and impact uh, we have decided to to define in the SDG context. And, and to make that operational, uh, we have developed a, a tool, uh, a management, a, an assessment and a management tool that we are now implementing. And that tool is built on our long experience with life cycle assessments and we are then adding socioeconomic parameters so that we can uh, get an, an, a rough estimate of the potential for SDG impact of our technology, our business models and different partnerships. And, and we are going to specifically use that tool to evaluate and prioritize our innovation pipeline uh, so that our company and solutions will become more future fit, it will be more in sync with what the world is asking for with the global goals. And uh, we expect a lot of benefits from doing that. Um, we, we are one of the advocates for a, a significant carbon price, so we hope that will be more uh, common in the, in the years, in the coming years, we expect cost on water resources to go up. So we expect that there's a stronger synergy between what is good for business and good for the world. So by installing these things in how we prioritize our innovation pipeline, we will make the pipeline stronger, we will make our solutions more future fit. We also experience already that this move has made us more relevant in a development context because we can talk about our company and talk about our technology in a different way that is appealing to policymakers, to NGOs and, and other partners that we would like to attract. And then of course, this is also benefiting in, in just in the way we talk with our customers, in branding, in the way we communicate about our company to our employees and to our future employees so that we, we already extract a lot of benefit from this. Klaus, that was a wonderful sales mm -hmm. pitch for the new Sustainable Development Goals. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I think a, an excellent example of how important it is to embed the goals into the real processes yeah. in the company. Yeah. So, so thank you for a great example. Jomen, I want to continue with you, uh, Executive Vice President at CJ Group in Korea. Uh, how, how, how are you addressing the new global goals and, and the shared value concept? Uh, to start with, uh, who we are is probably, we're the most diverse company in the world. We, are, uh, we have a four business groups which touches about four, uh, 15 industries, uh, starting from food company all the way to uh, movie making and uh, conserved production. and so. Uh, when we announced in our 60th anniversary in four years ago that we will actually adopt shared value, uh, creating shared value as our most important social, um, social responsibility agenda, uh, we had uh, all these, each individual business units had uh, their own agenda. Uh, you know, like when we were actually thinking about where we should actually pick our social agenda and, you know, find a business opportunity, that each business had its own, and there was a very, uh, but, you know, in many ways, we are working as a one business group. So not only communicating with outsiders, but also within the group with our employees, which is about 70,000 in uh, 23 countries. Um, there was a very hard to find the commonalities. And then this 17 goals came, uh, which we found out that we probably touches every single one of them, but it also gives a good commonality and the consistency in communication. So even uh, with that alone, is a great uh, opportunity for us. Um, we are actually in the process of identifying each group um, identifies which of the 17 goals has a more relevance or the direct business relation to their own individual business. And then uh, we're actually picking up the goals that is aligning with it. So actually we're, align we're using the 17 goals to align our uh, common business goals. So uh, the other thing is that uh, before that we were using uh, some countries actually announce their social agendas and time to time. 
Uh, one of the, the things as a, someone who's actually um, coming up with the strategies for the sustainable goals or C CSVs is that these goals change and then these goals are different from country to country. And with the, these 17 new and, you know, SDGs, we know that at least for the next 15 years we have uh, some common language to communicate within the organization as well as the outside. So those things are probably the immediate uh, benefit and I think our business goal is we are already in uh, about 10 industries. Most of the industry that we are in, we are the number one in Korea. But I think when we are going you know, to uh, global, the company is not as well as global as we would like to be. We're only about uh, less than 30% of revenues coming outside Korea. Most of them are very much domestic oriented. So when we are actually going different countries with a different culture and many different business environment, I think that this will give us to, uh, to be a good guideline to work with the local agendas and then communicate with the local community about who we are, which is we always worked with the, uh, the philosophy that the business only sustains with the, when it aligns with the social goals. So that's how we use it. Well, Joe, thank you very much for illustrating in practice how the global goals can be a North Star, not only for the global society, but also for you as a group of companies. So that was a great example. Thank you very much. So, um, Rajiv, you, you are the CEO of Mahindra Group. So, so uh, I'm keen to understand how you have taken the opportunity of integrating the new global goals into, into your businesses? Okay, first I'm not the CEO of the group, I'm the CEO of one of their businesses. Oh, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, let me answer your question uh, slightly differently. I want to focus on how we drive uh, shared value, Great. which is closely linked with the sustainable development goals. Uh, we are a 70-year-old company, started in uh, rural India and largely connected with rural India. And uh, the areas where uh, we have done a lot of work in SDG and in uh, shared value are in financial inclusion, in the risk management for the farmers, uh, in insurance, uh, in rural housing, solar energy, electric vehicles, and the use of IT for creating a marketplace for unemployment. These are some examples. Uh, we are guided by what we call the RISE movement. The objective is to drive positive change in the lives of our stakeholders and communities to enable them to rise. And we want to do that through three views of the world, three attitudes that we call the RISE pillars. Accept no limits, alternative thinking, and driving positive change. These views are built into our business strategy and into the organizational culture through the HR levers. I don't want to go into the details, but all the HR levers are aligned to these three pillars, and these three pillars and the objective guide our choice of businesses, choice of target segments, choice of products and services. We have identified five leadership behaviors that we believe will bring these three pillars to life in the everyday behavior of our employees and in the running of our businesses. And these five are, number one, using the whole mind, where we combine the left brain and the right brain. Number two, being multipliers of energy, engagement, passion, uh, decentralization. Number three, knowing how to manage fear and leverage failure as, as we pursue experimentation and innovation. Number four, being mindful and open to all the possibilities that is not being a uh, prisoner of our past. And number five, most important, to create trust, to be trusted and to be able to trust through authenticity, where we say what we think and we do what we say. Now, that sounds very idealistic, but actually, we use this to do our performance management system. We use this to create the KRAs for our businesses. We use it also in talent management and in succession planning. So it's this ecosystem where we have used one line, which is we want to drive positive change in the lives of our stakeholders and communities to enable them to rise, which is driving strategy, which is driving organizational culture, 
and all the HR levers are aligned to that. So this ecosystem has enabled us to do whatever we have done. Don't want to boast too much. We, are, uh, we have grown our uh, top line 11 times in the last 10 years, our bottom line 23 times, and our market cap 80 times. So there's something that we are doing right, despite yeah. what sounds like very fluffy fairy tale. I stop with that. Oh, by the way, as a group, we are water positive. Congratulations. Oh my God, that's great. Rajiv, thank you very much for your, for your great input. I mean, I think it's, it's wonderful inspiration for all of us to have no fear as a corporate value. Very good idea. Thank you. So, um, uh, Martha, we, we have come to you, final, <laughs> the, the final panelists. Um, so, as the Director of Corporate Responsibility, at CEMEX, how have you um, dealt with the issue of addressing shared value and, and uh, the global goals? Thank you. Uh, it's, I'm proud to be part of this movement and, and be part of this great panel. Uh, we are a 110 years old uh, company. We are based in Mexico, but we, we have operations in 50 countries, and we are building solutions uh, company. Our purpose is to build a better future. So it's a, a great purpose, and that's why uh, we, we, in a broad sense, we tackle the 17 SDGs in one way or the other. We wanted to prioritize that, and that's why um, we incorporated uh, the SDGs, and especially the, the local challenges and the global challenges into our strategy. And uh, we revisited our own uh, sustainability strategy on uh, uh, last year. And uh, we committed very specifically to two things. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about one of it, uh, which is, uh, it, and it has to do with our, uh, our core business, has, has to do because we want to contribute to the development of the cities and the communities in which we participate. And by that, um, uh, we want to, to do this development in the cities and the communities because we want to have places that are secure, that are resilient, that are sustainable, and, and that are inclusive. So um, in, in this model, uh, we, we focus first um, as an axe uh, of the, the cities and communities in housing. Uh, this, this is a priority for us. And in housing, we have created a lot of uh, different business models that are inclusive and that uh, convey on shared value. Uh, we, we have created a, a, a person-centered solutions to, to develop their skills uh, individually and collectively. We have um, understood and tried to contribute to strengthen the, the, the housing ecosystem, which is uh, very different and very complex in each of the countries in which we have operations. Um, both ways, how can, uh, can our company strengthen that ecosystem and how can that ecosystem strengthen our own <coughs> strategy? We have developed uh, integrated and, and uh, um, uh, solutions uh, with different players in a collaboration way. Uh, and we have innovated in products as well as services to, to really transform, transform these big challenges we we have ahead. Um, this this not happen overnight. We have a 21-year uh, journey with this uh, uh, process. Uh, and, and this create, creativity began uh, in 1994, uh, 95 when uh, a big economic crisis hit in our country. And uh, when we analyzed the different segments that were uh, um, damaged or affected, we realized that the, what, there was one segment that was the least affected, which is the self-construction or, or the low-income self-construction part of that. And we didn't re realize that we didn't know much about that. And it was a, a big part of uh, our market. So uh, we went deep and, uh, and understood what this uh, segment needed. Uh, and from that, try to came up with uh, different solutions co-created with them uh, to tackle these specific um, uh, these, these specific challenges 
within this specific um, um, sector. So the why is to build this, uh, uh, to build a better, a better future by betting on this uh, specific uh, segment in the market, which is the low, the low uh, income uh, uh, self-constructing uh, um, uh, market. The how is by creating this virtual cycle in which uh, we created a, a business impact by innovating in products and services and by uh, 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 scaling our proposition. And by that, we are um, uh, uh, having and created a lot of social impact. Um, we, we have understood the system of housing. We have identified the gaps on that system. And we, we, in collaboration with a lot of stakeholders, either by multi-sector um, uh, alliances, multi-stakeholder alliances, private, partner, private uh, 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 public partnerships for development, uh, by networks, by inclusive solutions, we have developed a lot of, uh, of different business models to tackle that um, specifically. The, the what, we have uh, different um, solutions like Patrimonio OI, uh, which was developed uh, uh, 17 years ago uh, and, and that makes sure that we understood that this low income self-construction segment is not homogeneous. So we from that developed other seven different business models okay. that tackle this specific uh, challenge and, and that uh, in different ways. So this is, this is the, the, the what and uh, we have come a long way uh, externally uh, with a lot of social impact, Thank but you. mainly internally. Internally, of course, in growth and profits, but mainly on the changing of the culture and the mindset of all the collaborators, uh, in which we are not um, building, ho building houses. Mm. Mm. We are facilitating others great, to great. construct their own home. Great. We're Thank not you. building towns. We are facilitating and promoting the construction of sustainable communities which will be healthy, proactive, and that at the same time help us to have a healthy business. Thank you very much, Marta, for yet another great story on how to address the global goals and implement them in business. I think this afternoon we have had five great stories from the panelists up here. And uh, I think now is the moment to take a few questions from the audience. Um, and we have a couple here in front of us. Um, I understand it in the way that the questions that are the most popular ones are the ones that comes up with the most votes. So um, let us pick one here. Um, Bia, I think mm -hmm. you have a specific question mm -hmm. that goes, uh, is there any inherent conflict between drinking water and manufacturing a Coke? Uh, would Coke be more water friendly if everyone drank water? Well, I, I think, you know, no, I, I'm glad that, the, that this audience is not afraid, back to no fear, right? Exactly. So, no, these, these are very good questions, and they're questions that a business like Coca-Cola, when you think about we're in the business and you're, you know, the number one ingredient in our product is water, and we recognize that water is the lifeblood of communities. So as we look at our business, and we do have 3,500 products, all of them have water, so it's not just about if people drink more water versus, a, you know, Coca-Cola, because we also sell water brands. It's important for us to understand what's the community issue. We know that water risk is a very serious concern around the world that communities face, whether it's a community that's in a drought or a community that has an abundance of water but it's not drinkable. So what role do we play as a business? And that's why we set the goal actually all the way back to even before my, my role was created, if, if you dial back to history, even back to 1917, we were the first to partner in emergency response around water. But we formally set the goal around replenishing 100% of the water we use, including in the manufacturing of our beverages. So we count that water that it takes to produce the beverages. And we set the goal to become water neutral. The goal was set in 2010, it started some work all the way back to 2007. Some of this audience might know Jeff Seabright, who was at Coke years ago and is now at Unilever. 
he actually started that work to ensure that we had the discipline, we could measure and track, we could look at the community level and see what was happening. And I'm proud to say that we're actually ahead of schedule in meeting that goal. I can't tell you exactly where we are today, but I can tell you that the last number we reported publicly is 94% of the way there. Now, some people applaud it, and I'll be honest, in my role, I don't. I look at that number and that scares me because what I think when I see 94% against 100% goal is that we still have a lot more work to do. That's an average across the world and I'm very proud of the work that it's taken to achieve it because that means we have to have everything from replenishing or recycling the water, replenishing the water in projects, looking at the source water protection. It also means at times shutting down our business when we're in a situation of a drought when that takes place in a local community. And those are real decisions that have to be made. I also know how hard it is as a business to keep that 94% and get to 100 and get to, and congratulations on water positive. It's not easy, right? It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of partnership. It means that we're working with the local community at a very local level. We're working with the NGOs. We're working with the government. And we also assure our data, so we work with Ian Y today to look at the data to make sure that when we publicly report it, it's the data that they say absolutely these things are happening, they're sustainable, they're repeatable, and we can measure and track. And so my concern is when we say that we get to you know 100% in water positive because what I don't want is for the work to stop or for people to become complacent. I don't want people to congratulate and say job well done. I want them to say, how are you going to keep that 100% and how are you going to do more? And so um, I do think that it is a very serious issue that you know, we all have to work together on and that Coke has a unique responsibility but also the ability to make a difference. Bia, yeah, thank you very much. We have one question here that's just becoming more and more popular as, as time passes. And <laughs> it goes, should companies focus on contributing to the SDGs that are directly related to the core business? regardless to the link between the SDGs and their products to pick anyone to champion. And uh, I'd like to make a brief comment, and then I would like to close the panel by just asking each of our panelists to have a maximum one-minute point of view on how to address the SDGs and the relation to business. Um, at the Global Compact, uh, we have issued a number of tools for how companies can begin to work with the new global goals. One of them is called the SDG Compass. And in this tool, um, it's, it's uh, quite clear that the best way for companies to start is to find goals that are directly relevant to the business, to the products, to the services, so that there is a clear link between the, glo the global goals and, um, um, and the business in question, which makes the business integration much easier. So that's our recommendation at an overall level. But um, let's just have uh, one minute from each of the panelists on how you are experiencing this in practice. So I agree with you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you can say a bit more. Okay. No, so I think because of the nature of our history and the nature of our businesses, very naturally a huge amount of our business opportunities come from SDGs. We are looking at unmet needs of underserved customers in underpenetrated markets. And no matter where we look for opportunities, they fit into one of the 17 SDGs. But we go from our business and move into adjacencies and see what the customer needs are. For us, it is crucial that we are solving critical problems for our consumer. And we have to have deep knowledge of our consumer, know where we can have a, a value proposition that is better than what others can give and which is sustainable. Thank you, Raki. Perfect. So, yeah, what's your so can I say agree, agree, and then I'll add. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're all relevant to our business because at the end of the day, our business is about people and communities. We employ over 700,000 people in our system across 207 countries. We employ locally, we produce locally, we manufacture locally, we sell locally. And so we had a really hard time looking at any of these and saying they're not relevant to our business. They're all relevant because they're relevant to people and to the communities. But what we have found is that we need to become 
very serious about a couple key ones where we believe we have some expertise and can drive our system to make a difference and a greater impact. And then those are the ones that we will dial up as a business, but at the same time without ignoring, you'll see on our websites, without ignoring any of them, frankly, because they are, at the end of the day, the lifeblood of what society needs. Thank you, Bia. Mm -hmm. Martha, may I take you next? Yeah, sure. I, I guess, as I mentioned, we have to start with our business and how this business contributes to the SDG. But we can go beyond, and we can go beyond that when we promote that these fundamental changes uh, uh, are, are, are in place e either in government structures or in economic rules or in changing behaviors of companies and citizens. And, and by that we have a, um, a very, um, um, it's very important for us to be part of this by uh, adapting, by innovating, by collaborating, and by speci specifically by acting. Uh, Minjo, what, what's your view? I think the key here is the direct and core business. Um, unfortunately or fortunately <laughs> in our group, probably this means that all 17, I mean, you know, <laughs> one of our employees said that maybe the 14 doesn't apply. That was the marine, uh, the, the, I guess, below water um, <laughs> system. We, or we produce the animal, I mean, the fish feed for, that's our animal feed business. So I think um, it is, I agree, it's a direct and core, but in some cases that we just have to work on our 17 goals. Great. Klaus? Great. Yeah, core, clearly. I mean, we cannot uh, fix the, the planet if it's based on CSR and charity. It has to be the business muscle that is put behind this. Uh, so clearly the core. Uh, and uh, we, we deliver to 14 out of the 17 of the SDGs, but our focus is our business and we just measure the impact of our business against the SDGs. And, and we believe that meeting world needs is, is absolutely the biggest business opportunity the world has ever seen, and uh, that the SDGs provide a great lens to understand how you as a business can put your machine behind that. And um, we only hope that the politicians will step up and work together with businesses so that uh, policy frameworks can be aligned to where businesses can excel and deliver solutions for the future we all want. Klaus, thank you for reminding us that the Sustainable Development Goals is a great way of turning risks into opportunities for business. So this has been a wonderful sample of five companies that have very quickly got to grips with how to address both shared value and the Sustainable Development Goals. And before we leave the stage here, I would actually like to end by asking a question to the audience. So how many of you are already in the process of implementing the Sustainable Development Goals in the same way as you have heard from these distinguished panel members? Please raise your hand. That is not bad at all. <laughs> what should we say one third? <laughs> Excellent, well done. And I think now no one is, is in doubt that the Sustainable Development Goals is a business opportunity. It's a chance for new innovation, moving into new markets, and it's something that should be started rather sooner than later. May I ask you to give a big applause to this wonderful panel. Thank you.